<laughs> okay, welcome back, guys. Today we are interviewing a medium, Harry Golden Davis, the Motor City medium. Oh, by the way, it's nice to be here. So how I was introduced to Terry was I was gifted a reading by a relative. <clears throat> so I just showed up. Um, he was There was a party he was having at one of my relatives' house, or they were having and had him there. And um, immediately when I met Terry, I was a little bit on edge and nervous because I was thinking about, does he, like, can he read my mind? Like, what does he know that I don't want him to know? So I was instantly guarded and instantly he picked up on that and told me, you're going to have to relax or this isn't going to work. And then he told me what my name was, not just my first name, but my first and middle name. So I was like, okay, maybe this you did. So we... Um, you, um, told me, you know, introduced yourself to me. You instantly made me feel very relaxed and comfortable. And then he told me that there was somebody that was trying to come through. And he gave me a set of initials. The initials at the time meant nothing to me. I had no idea, could not place it. And he told me, he said, later on, you might be reading a newspaper, watching tv but this is going to click for you and you're going to know exactly what i'm talking about and he gave me the person's message anyway which was i'm sorry i couldn't help you didn't make a lick of sense use of that <laughs> didn't make a lick of, lick of sense to me at the time and i was in a car reading a newspaper flipping through and what caught my attention was a memorial in a newspaper like somebody that was for somebody that passed not recently, but like maybe five, six years had gone by. And it was for an old therapist that I had that his initials were the initials you gave me. The therapist committed suicide. And I just sat there like, oh my God, Terry told me that not that this would happen, but that's the person that was coming through to me. And that's when things started to uh, kind of sink in for me that no matter how minute we think our interaction with people is, that it can have a profound impact. Not that I think that I was any reason that he made that decision, but right. That's what I got that, you know, like maybe he felt like he wasn't doing it kind of thing, like doing enough, but that was when things started to click. Okay, we are really all connected and we really all do influence each other. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I had a wonderful positive experience with my first reading with you. Second reading, I was really, really chaotic. Like my head was just all over the place. And like, it's it, it, okay. It okay that I don't remember you. Oh, completely fine. <laughs> okay. Completely fine. Remember this? I'm supposed to. So, right. Uh, but thanks for remembering me. I guess I'm at heck. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> but all right, go ahead. It's such a so flattering. But that was not only my first interaction with a medium, but that it, the, my first interaction with the medium really did. That was you. Um, really did have a profound impact on like me putting the pieces together on what my spiritual walk was and what i and understanding but um terry um do you want to tell us about yourself how did you oh uh, me okay you, you got my name terry golden davis i turned 61 january 14th if anybody wants to celebrate um please do but uh, uh being a medium i don't have anything to uh references it too so you know i've had jobs and stuff but uh this is what i am like some people are like born to be a mma fighter you know like that and this is all i am so uh i live in belleville uh, you know you can get a hold of me through the girls here and uh you know give me a call i'll give you a reading if you want i went to romulus um went to college for a little while had a few jobs. Anyway, you don't want to hear about crap. Let's, let's go to questions, girls. I'm ready. All right. Um, 
you um <clears throat> you have had training by a pretty well known medium. Training. I'm not with Sylvia if you're talking about yeah. her. Uh, uh, yeah, Sylvia was great. The training, I you know, it was mostly like a meditational type thing at the time. She did tell me that this is what you're supposed to be doing with your life and at back back then when it happened, uh, it wasn't it was just starting to pick up on being psychic could be cool, you know, because when you're a little baby psychic, me, uh, you know, in the fifth grade or something, everybody's looking at you funny, you know, a short bus kind of kid. But when Sylvia took care of me for a little while, um, helped me out quite a bit. Training, I don't know, it's learning to meditate, learning to listen to your inner self. I, there's no school for being a medium. You either are or you're not. You, you can't just, uh, you can't take a class and learn to talk to dead people. They want to, they want to talk to you or they don't, you know, that was a, a good answer. I'm sorry. That was a question I had is if, um, if, ev if everybody it has some yeah. ability or. Yeah. Everybody, everybody's born psychic. Sometimes it goes away, but it comes in waves. Okay, like sometimes you you won't even know you're psychic. You're just like, I'm not taking Telegraph Road today. And when you did, it's like, I should have fucking listened. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, and you feel a bad feeling in your stomach. The phone rings and, you, you know, it's a friend who, uh, you know, passed away kind of deal. You can always hear that coming in your heart. I'm, I'm, Everybody. Not I'm notorious for... Um my husband will be like, I want to go to this side of town. And I'll be like, no, that makes my stomach hurt. We're not going over there today. And I won't. I absolutely refuse to. And while reading the paper or something, there'll be a bad accident. I'll be like, see, I told you. I'm not going on that side of town today. <laughs> when did you start to notice that maybe you were different than everybody else? It was like all the time. My mom said I was born wrong. So... You know, I kind of just went with, I tried everything. You know, I had a microscope, I had a telescope. I, I've, I've owned every animal known to man except maybe Noah. Uh, you know, I just, I had to find me. I didn't, psychic was always me, but I didn't, you couldn't make a living being a psychic. You know what I mean? I didn't even write a book. So this is my option right here. Here's my opportunity. So always, I've always known I was different. Psychic, I didn't even know the word. Now, what, um, how would you classify your abilities? <clears throat> <I'm> awesome. <laughs> well, that is an understatement. <clears throat> well, that was weak. No, I was trying to be waking my own tail there. <laughs> because I didn't have any. So I just went, I am awesome. Uh, did I mention good hair yet? Uh, yes, and um, would you like us to mention the also the fandom um, that you have for Elvis? What, what do you mean? I'm an Elvis fan? A huge one. <laughs> Big one, yeah. So you've been to my house. Yeah, I, uh, I'm thinking about buying a jumpsuit. Not for me, just to have it on a, on a thing. I've never, uh, been to your, I've never been to your home, but... Oh, uh, here's I'm Elvis. I'm looking at it all over the place. I have an Elvis <laughs> Right, um, uh, but um, in Pulp Fiction, there's a cut scene where John Travolta says that everybody is either a Beatles fan or an Elvis fan. Or an Elvis you're fan. not. You're, you can't be both. You can't be both. And then when I met you, uh, I was like, "Oh yeah, Elvis fan." Like you don't even gotta ask. <laughs> yeah, I can. I'm both. See, I'm weird. You can't be an Elvis fan and a Beatles fan, but the Beatles were an Elvis fan. So why can't I do it? I okay. like the Beatles. Every song is a good song from the Beatles. Uh, uh, every Elvis song is good. <laughs> Sorry, bro. <laughs> Casey's listening. I don't know. He, I can't hear him. He never comes through. Being a medium, you know, it's not like I can call Elvis in my head and assume he's going to answer. Elvis, uh, not Elvis, even God doesn't answer. Every Even God. <laughs> I, I just placed Elvis above God somehow, and I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> God, even when I pray, 
and I'm God's favorite, even when I pray, um, I don't get a response every time. So being a medium doesn't, if you were to sit in front of me and, and get a reading, I can't always tell you that, you know, your dad's passed or your mom's passed or, you know, I don't know until they show up. That was good. Now, when they show up, how do you see or hear what they're saying is it did I like show you pictures can you visually see them or is it just audio oh depends on the individual the, the, the person in heaven uh, it, you know sometimes it's just a shadow and I could just see a shadow behind you and I could tell whether it's on one side or the other side thank you Sylvia one side or the other side whether it's male or female so if you if you've ever had a reading in person you would notice I'd be looking on one side or the other and above you. Just try to connect, right? So, uh, it's, it, you know, sometimes it's just a shadow, but you can tell if it's a boy or a girl. Sometimes you can't. You can tell it's strong, so it could be a strong one. Uh, pictures. Um, sometimes you can see the whole person, whether they're dressed up or not. You know, these kind of things. And if they don't show up if they don't want to. And sometimes people dress up just to come hang out with you. Whether it's your birthday coming up or whatever, they dress up to say, hey, I'm here. And thank you thank you for coming to see a medium. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, it's a shadow of voices. Yeah, that's a weird one. Yes, you hear it. But sometimes it's like animals pass. So you can hear a bark. But you don't see a picture, so you don't know what kind of dog. And I don't know dogs, even if they did show up. But the, uh, yeah, you can tell by the bark whether it's a bigger dog or a littler dog. So I hope that was a good answer. Yeah, guys. Uh, hey, Jolene, how you doing over there? I'm good, sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear you yet. Oh, I was focusing on the audio, making sure it's recording correctly and picking it up. I'm sorry. Okay. I have a question, though. Um, what do you think about Ouija boards and divination tools that are deemed sa as satanic? I wouldn't even wear a t-shirt. I got a shot glass. I'm looking at it right now. I got a shot glass of a Ouija board. Uh, but I don't drink up from it. It's just sitting over there because it was a gift. No, don't play with Ouija boards. You never know what you're going to bring in. You know, like I said, you know, the um, people that want to come through, it's usually not being mean, you know, but when you open up a board like that, you never know if you're going to get some mean. And and I know you're going to ask about demons. So Ouija boards are, it's, it's a gateway to whoever comes through. So if it's, a, if it's going to be a demon, you don't want that. And do I believe in demons? I have to. Are they as like the exorcist kind of thing? God, I hope not. But uh, yeah, stay away from Ouija boards. As far as uh, other divination tools, like uh, I use tarot cards just to give me a point of something to talk about. I've never read a book or anything, but you know, if it's got a cup, I'm thinking about love life or something you might like. Some, you know, it's just the way it goes. And um, what's this thing I'm doing with my hand right here? You can't see me. Oh. Uh, thingy that goes around and around pendulum <clears throat> pendulum thanks man uh i have one of those does it work i believe so do i use it no i don't want to i i i, I if they're the, the tools you're talking about are necessary if you're trying and you really want to try as a psychic or a medium you really want to try you don't want to fake it. You don't want to just say some arbitrary things that's going on in your life. That's bullshit. I swore again. Sorry. You're fine. Um, right. Jolene has to edit me constantly. I'm going to get. We have Patty Mouse, so. <laughs> the F bomb is not new to this channel. <laughs> Um, especially because we uh, we talk a lot about true crime and serial killers as well, so oh. things get rather dark around here. Kind of hard not um, to use those words during those conversations. Yeah, will be. Oh, um, pretty much. I love serial killer. Pretty much cryptic, 
pretty much cryptic curiosity is anything dark and mysterious. So to me and jo and Jolene both, we don't think there's anything more creepy than humans because we're the ones that do the most damage. Um. So yeah, we have to we have to include the the nasty people along with the things that go bump in the night that we may not be able to see. Who's your favorite serial killer? Um, you have to define favorite. As far as the one that makes makes me want to lock my doors and the windows, that would be BTK. Oh, that one. Um, as far as the one I do believe that it forced the most ch or had the most impact on society to make change would be Ramirez. Oh, I disagree. I think uh, Gacy ruined clowns for everybody. Well, except for me. <laughs> well, you still like clowns? My Tanya does too. She still likes clowns. I fucking see a clown, I'm going that way. Because I don't want to. You know? And, you know, Bundy and all this. Like, I guess Bundy would be my favorite if I'm supposed to pick a favorite. That's weird. Favorite serial killer as well. All right, go ahead, guys. I interrupted. I asked a question this time. Well, actually, <clears throat> right on track for another question I have is um, either have you ever came across somebody in a reading or in passing that you were given information psychically that they either have done something really bad or that they're going to? Yes. Not going to. I, that's, that I can't. I don't know. I, nobody, I don't know. That I wouldn't know. Um, but I did help with a murder case on a guy who his girlfriend was dying from, what's that, when you can't breathe, you have that insulator, in, insulator psyche on your mouth yeah. kind of thing. And she was dying and, and he wouldn't, he didn't save her. And, uh, and when he died, that was one of the things he regretted the most in his life because I read for his mom. And... I didn't know they were related, but yeah, it turned. Yeah, that was an awful one. That's the worst one. So he told me he did it. How do you handle like if you get information psychically that, like, you know something about somebody that maybe they don't even know? Like, for instance, the person that's passed on that's coming through did something to the living person you're talking to that they don't know about and they want you to tell them. I have no choice but to tell them. I'm just a telephone. I don't even know how this job works. You know what I mean? It's like you're either psychic or you're not. There's no school for that. And yeah, if you just tell them, you know, you know, one now this is a fun part of it, I guess, is um, every this girl, I don't know her name right now, starts with a J, but it, we went to a restaurant where she was working and she came to the table and uh, I said, before she talked, I said, wow, every time I see you, you're pregnant. And she went, Shh, nobody knows yet, you know? So that's kind of the fun part, knowing that uh, people have a lot of regret. There are people who come all the way from heaven, which is another dimension, you know? Uh, come all the way from heaven to apologize means they're working on it. Have I talked to murderers? I have. Have I, uh, serial killers? No. Do I want to? Yes. I really do. I want to, you know, I, you know, I'm, I watch some of that show, those shows on the TV and I'm like, Tanya, let's write him a letter. And she's like, there's something wrong with you. No, no there is not. There's nothing no, there wrong with us, man. No, Would you not. be interested in true crime stuff? That's probably what I'm going to watch after I look you guys up. Probably my one of my dream interviews is to interview Kemper. Who? Edward Kemper. That's what I was going to say. Who? That one doesn't ring a bell. Still alive? Yeah. yeah. Kemper's still alive. Or still alive. Uh, the reason I'd like to interview him is I don't believe the FBI would have caught him unless he turned himself in. I agree. I agree. But he wanted to be caught. You can't keep this up. And I don't understand how you kill your grandparents as a teenager and you convince them that you're not a murderer. Hold on, hold on. I, I have a question for you then. Do you like your grandparents? One of them. See? And you're <laughs> capable. You know, probably not of murder. It takes a certain type of person to be a murderer. 
I think you're born a murderer too. I don't think you personally just an opinion. I I don't think life turns you into one. I think you know. I think that you're born with the you know the potency. It's a word somewhere in there. You're either you you are or you aren't. I think you're born evil. Yeah, I agree with that as well. I, I mean, who makes soup out of babies? Well, like fish. You know, like Jolene and I. Have, yeah, we've had this conversation before. That uh, there's no. Or Jolene and I have had this conversation oh, before. Sorry. That like somebody like me that has had a whole lifetime full of trauma that I probably should be a serial killer or like way more violent than I am. But I'm not. I'm not at all. So, probably an old soul, by the way. Um, like that's what intrigues me, though. How come I can have some of the similar life experiences as these people and similar trauma, but I have that point of I stop and and don't move forward with taking someone's life oh, anymore. For real, you never thought about being a serial killer. Oh, I th- I've thought about it, but I wouldn't do it. See, there, there's why. I don't like blood that much. See, there. this is where I think that, I think everybody has intrusive thoughts, like really bad intrusive thoughts that we don't talk about. And supposedly, um, according to the FBI, at any given time, there's over a thousand operating serial killers. Oh, yeah, that's uh, terrifying. I think I've met one. I, I really oh, do. I think I've, friend. no. Um, I was I was working um, at a Menards. I was a back gate guard, you know, check people's lumber, make sure they're not stealing out of the back. And, um, no offense to Menards, but who steals wood? A lot of a lot of people, like, and some of them I th- some of them I think it's on purpose, and some of them I think it's just you know they can't count. But um, there was this one guy that. I, I'm a friendly person and very talkative, so when he came up to the gate, and I'm like, hi, how you doing, you know, I have a great day, I'll see you on your way out, like I do to every other person, and he didn't look at me, he looked through me, didn't say a word, didn't grunt, just stoic, went back, and then I have to check the, the inside of their vehicle against the receipt, and the things that he weren't, wasn't, or he was buying didn't go together. Like, it wasn't, like, concrete and a fence post. It was a chainsaw, um, lie. I mean, things like you joke, that like, things like you joke about. But things, you know, they weren't things like, or it looked like he had a project. It was, like, things that you joke about, like, what three things do you take to the Walmart cashier to shock them? It was kind of <laughs> like that. Where the people do that? <laughs> His demeanor thing, I've never heard of that. His demeanor was so off and he came back again, like it was almost like he caught on that I knew that he wasn't right. And when he came back there was like a fake force. Um, like f- trying to be human okay. like trying to be human but not. And like instantly who I thought of was Ted Bundy. Like just the way he he tried real hard to act like normal people, but he just wasn't, so he didn't pull it off very well. No, the killer didn't get caught lately. No. See, See and it either, I think he's got people locked in his basement, though. Sounds like it. I, I, I almost said, I need a basement, but, you know... <laughs> I didn't say that, and I don't have a basement. I don't even have a crawl space, so you know, you can come over. <laughs> Very good. Sorry, let's guys come on. All right. Um, <laughs> oh, can you shut off your ability? Is that something like when you go home at night and you're done being? No, you can't turn it off. But it's not like constantly on. Like, oh. Uh, I don't know, it's not like a radio playing the same song over and over. Although I can't sleep, and I do hear Stevie Nicks all the time, and I don't know the words, fuck her. <laughs> uh, Gypsy, that's all I know. And it, didn't, it sounds just like her in my head, but uh, not out loud, I just found out. So, uh, no, you don't, I can't turn it off. I don't know about other mediums, uh, psychics, I can turn off psychic. 
Like, I'm not going to drive down the road and say, hey, Tanya, get over. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to be a backseat driver and realize some guy's beating up behind us. And she, maybe if I did, she, maybe she wouldn't say, stop talking to me. <laughs> but, you know, especially right after the guy, see, told you, kind of thing. Uh, the medium part, you can't turn off. If they want to come through, they're going to. It happens sometimes in the middle of the night. I, I wake up at, what's, let's say, just 4 o'clock in the morning. I can't go back to bed until the next day or until, you know, because what if it's your grandma coming through and I gotta, I'm got giving a reading to Jolene, you know what I mean? And so I, I, I they're going to stay until I get to give the message. That was weird. I have a weird job. So um, I always envision that scene in Ghost where he's singing Henry VIII and she's driving her nuts all night. Cause... No, I'm going to watch that movie now. <laughs> I've only seen it one time. So like, man, that's not, there's too many psychic jokes in there. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I'll look for that one. Yeah, yeah. You, you're my big day today. So uh, after this, I'm going to oh, drink have... beer and watch Ghost. I evidently made a joke that our followers did not find funny about Patrick Swayze and Ghost. Uh, the, I posted a meme that said that he's been dead for 10 years but still hasn't made Ghost 2. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> Some people did it, but that's okay. <laughs> Whoopi is still alive. This could work. <laughs> See? Now she could be a real medium for a minute. <laughs> right. Oh, no. We're just the eyes of uh, Patrick Swayze, man. That's fucking good. I <laughs> swore. <laughs> I'm going to use that. I'm going to steal that. Now, um, <laughs> do, do you think, like, technology that's being developed and being used um, in trying to prove paranormal is like a scientific study, do you think that that's helping or hurting it? Really good question. Off to Patrick Swayze. Uh, I think technology is going to help because if we can see it in filters, whether it's uh, you know on your phone, you know the audio stuff. The uh, but if you can, if you can filter out the infrared or some filter out, you can see you can see ghosts easier. But it's ghosts that want to be seen. It's not, it's sometimes here's, let's differentiate between ghosts and people in spirit. Ghosts are people who are stuck here, okay? And I think that's going to be easier to detect because of some filter or some app. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's going to be an app one day. <laughs> but the people in spirit, they come through or they don't, you know? Dead people, and some, some like ghosts, they're like in a loop. So, you know, sometimes they come around once a year, just when they died or on their birthday. You won't know, especially if you bought the house and you're brand new there, <laughs> you know, living on a fucking grave. Oh, like, like the residual type hauntings, like, that happen exactly. at, like, in, like, Confederate battlegrounds where it's just a loop of the soldiers. Uh, <clears throat> you guys would have a good time and, and haunted places. You'd have fun in Gettysburg. There's another place you should go to. Oh, I was just thinking. Yeah, you should check it out. Anyway, it'll pop in my head in a, in a, in a second. And it's like, why did he say that? Well, because it was in my head earlier. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupt myself when I talk. That's okay. Um, now, um, like ghost hunting TV shows, do you watch any of those? Or have you seen any of them? I don't. I, I don't. I, I don't watch them because that's my job. Yeah. So I, I don't want to watch, you know, if I was a doctor, I wouldn't want to watch doctor shows. You know, if I was a cop, I wouldn't watch cops, you know, so I don't, I don't watch them. Uh, I have seen a few episodes. Sure. And as far as mediums go, I didn't, I didn't see anything that impressed me. I, I hope that shit if you want. I'm on the fence about <clears throat> ghost hunting shows using mediums as proof. Because you, so. because you can't. I mean, there, you can't, can't prove it. right? You can't prove what's in somebody's head, and you. Um, so I don't. I mean, not that. Well, 
Now there is a show yeah. there is a show that I find really interesting where it's a medium that goes in first and reads the house and then she leaves the entire state, goes back to wherever they're they're from and a cop and a cop comes in and he does like the research part of it. And at the at the end of the show they meet and see if the medium how close the medium got to what the actual check. We'll answer that, but I think creative editing has a lot to do with the of those shows. I do like that show. The they're you or any time where they're they're proving the medium by fact. I'm okay with using that as as credibility. But like sure. when they walk in and they're like, "Oh, I feel that your sister Mary's over here." Yeah, and, that's the one I watch. And yeah. and there's not any like there's no EMF readings there's no cold spots there's no other indication that anything there's no you don't know, always see a cold spot. you know with a, being a medium you don't always get cold you don't always uh, I don't even have an EMF reader but if it went off all the time that'd be annoying wouldn't it well that's another I mean, question I have is since you are married is there any any times that you're like Somebody comes through and you're not on, you know, on the clock, so to speak. You're just at home chilling, and Tanya feels it too. Yeah, her brother hung himself. Oh, he comes okay. through quite a bit. He does visit quite a, quite often. I'm still waiting for my best friend died day before yesterday. He hasn't visited yet. I'm waiting for Kelly. You know, so doors open, bro. Do you sorry if I'm sound like I'm crying? It's okay. I'm sorry to hear that you lost your friend. Do you? Um, yes, I saw it coming. Another psychic joke. Yes, I saw it coming. Oh, I see. Can't, be, I can't turn to. it off. Now, do you? Um, since obviously your family knows that you're a medium, when members pass, are you the first stop? No, but I do have family that won't take from me because they're afraid that it's like oh no terry's calling oh shit something's up don't answer that yeah i get that quite a bit uh no i i don't read for family i, I don't read for family because i know uncle danny passed and i heard about it and i know everything about uncle danny so i don't read for family so they don't call and say other than uncle danny died or whatever they don't call and say, I need a reading. They don't, let say, won't do it. I'd rather a skeptic than a family member. That makes sense. It, not to not say this is the same, but it's almost like I work in the healthcare industry. And if there's somebody I know and I open their account, I immediately shut it and transfer the call. Because that's too personal to me. I don't need to know that much yeah, about you. That's a great way to put it, I know already. I know everything about you. I know if you're right-handed or left-handed. It's not... Uh... Oh, and go back to tools, uh, divination tools. I, not only tarot cards do I use, but I read your hand just to see if there's any health concerns there or, you know, mental illness or whatever, whether you worry too much, those kind of things. So palmistry, I guess, is... See, I just jumped backwards eight days, didn't I? I think you did read my palms, too. I always, if you're in person, I start with that. It's just an easy way to uh, connect, you know, well, not during COVID, you know, can't touch hands. I work during COVID. Uh, go ahead, sweetie, I, I digress. I, fi I find palmistry fa fascinating. I read a book on it once. Yeah. I, read a, I read a book on it once, and... Um, I think it, I don't think I believe it was you. It was another medium I went to. Um, she was at a fair and she really did like pull me over. And it was interesting because she painted. Um, that's how she communicate or communicated was with painting, and it was pretty interesting. I mean, so far nothing, nothing's been right. But I haven't been climbing on any ladders either. So. Um, but, um, I forgot where I was going with that. Um, oh, um, 
it was kind of almost, I'm glad I did read that book because there was something she was interpreting on my hands that I know, like, it's, I read a book. I don't really know what I'm doing. But it, she contradicted the hands. And I don't think it was the paint lady that did that. It was somebody else, that, this random person that walked up and was like, oh, you're going to have this and this. And I'm like, that's not even what that means. <laughs> like, you're crazy, people. <laughs> I wrote a book in the 12th century about poems for you to read. Uh, I won't read it. It's tedious now. But it, it tells you every line and where in the spaces. I have to look at it. Yeah. The, uh... I have a book I'll loan you if I can find it. That, uh, but it's so, I wrote it a long time ago. But the thing is, I did write a book. 12th century, does that count? <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, I, you know, <laughs> but, you know, palmistry is something you can learn. But palmistry is something you can also fake. Because nobody else is looking at the book. You can just go, hey, guess what that line is? Oh, you're going to die at 44. Fucking all. Nobody knows on your can when you die. It doesn't say that. Or I'd read that first. Well, yeah. it was it was a person. I went to like one of those like um, Fair. holistic fairs, and you know you can tell the like carnival barker types types are, or psychics because they'll come up to you. Where right, and most of the other ones they'll wait until you pick them, and. This, it was a lady, she walked up to me, and I, on my left hand, I have two little lines on the side of my hands. Well, in the palmistry book I read, that was the children that I was destined to have. And my right hand is what I would actually be. No? No, wrong book. Wrong book? It's my book. It's not, no, it's one that's not a mistake hand, it's one that's the destiny hand. All these lines mean something. Hold on. You can't read mistakes. Or you wouldn't make any. If you could read poems, you wouldn't make any mistakes, right? That's the way that comes. I'm looking at my hands right now. Are you still there? Yeah. Sorry. All right. No, it doesn't work. You read the wrong book. Or you went to the wrong... Somebody read the same book, maybe. I'll, I'll send you some if you want to. If, if you want me to, I'll send you a book. That's easy to read, and you can still learn from it. And but you're not—you don't want to do palmistry in any way. Would you rather just visit a haunted house or go find Bigfoot? Find Bigfoot, not shop for Bigfoot. Find Bigfoot. See, on cryptids, I'm not sure where I lie on that. Um, this is a question that we pose to our viewers about cryptids: if they are really beings here that we don't. Like, are not cattle or categorized like the Jersey Devil or uh, Michigan's Dog Man, um, Skinwalkers, which Skinwalkers is a, that's a, I don't really put. I would, I would, I would go camping there. You would? Yeah. Yeah, man, you would have to want to. Come on. People <laughs> like us, if we didn't go there, it's like not seeing Graceland. Right. Yeah. Now. <laughs> Like, with, with Bigfoot and stuff like that, though, I'm not sure if I really think that that's... People yeah, like, are... You're not gone, are you? No. You still there? Yeah. No, I'm not gone. I was there. <laughs> I that out. Yeah, it, it, I wouldn't... It, it, I, I'd want to see Graceland. I want to see Skinwalker Ranch, uh, Area 41, 51, Area... Oh, wait. Something seven. I'm a big fan of uh, Lazar, Bob Lazar. Me too. <laughs> I mean, I, I I know I've seen every interview, but I still watch it again because I might learn something. Well, it depends on who he's talking to, on how no much Rogan. right, on how much he talks about. Uh, like, he opened up a lot to Rogan. But the really, really interesting interview is the first one, the one that he gave to George. Um, can't think of his name off the top yeah. of my head right now, but he was the. I, I, the, I know who you're talking about. The first person he told the one that started it. Yep. George, yeah, it's going to bother me. Now I'm going to Google it. Yeah, I can't think of what his last name is, but he's also involved with Skinwalker Ranch. What are you talking about, real quick? Um, I missed some, that. Sorry. 
It's it has to do with the alien stuff that we're still researching, but a oh, big okay. a big part of um, that is Bob Lazar, who was a scientist who came whistle blew, and in the eighties came out with they are back engineering alien technology in Area Fifty One. I and, love you guys. And he um, took videos, took his friends out to see them. They seen the craft flying. There's supposed video yeah, evidence. It had a schedule of the test flights where we're test flying, okay. test flying alien craft. Yeah, and after he came out, then his like birth certificate disappeared, and his college records disappeared, oh, and wow. they started raiding his house. This man's from Michigan. He lives right around Grand Rapids. Oh shit! Really? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, how I learned about him is something caught my attention in a news. You know how they do like puff pieces here in Michigan. Like, I he owns like a science tech company in Michigan, and um, he did something for a science class and like helped them with like a STEM project or something like that. And a news crew did a puff piece on it, but then they instantly discredited him in that puff piece i'm like why would you do that so then i start looking up who he was and then learned about all this area 51 that he worked there that they there's this whole conspiracy where like the government is is after him like completely trying to discredit him and my whole point is if he's crazy why don't you just let him be crazy nobody's gonna listen right College. Right. You know, you can't even find his college records, you know. Work history they disappeared. He didn't even go there, MIT or something. I think yeah, I said he didn't go to MIT when he was actually a part of like it was government this government um testing thing that was something to do with like really intricate technology or something like that. But it, it like they was documented in a place that they couldn't get rid of it and that's how he found it and like start people start connecting the dots that the government's legit going after this dude and if he's full of shit why would they care right that right there um, makes it look intriguing yeah you do your research i've been researching area 51 bob lazar and just aliens in general since we started about a year and a half ago and i still don't feel prepared enough to actually record a podcast on it that's how much is out there we did a, a little bit on skinwalker just to kind of like give a taste and throw it out there but yeah there's a lot and there's a that was more complicated walker it's more complicated than lazar lazar's got a story you just listen to the story and believe or you don't Skinwalker, I mean, what are we talking about? Interdimensional beings, you know? Uh, you know, those, that's, that's scary shit right there. Yeah. Yeah, interdimensional. What about that stuff that happened in Miami? Did you guys watch some of that? Yeah, we yeah. did. Uh, we did talk about that. Yeah, I, 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 I watched all of it until it's not on anymore. Do you know? I mean, you probably look it up, but. Yeah, that stuff wasn't. was really interesting. Yeah. We did, um, we did a little, like, just a little, like, blur piece on it for the channel. Like, hey, guys, did you see this? What do you guys think about it type thing? I don't know. Did uh -uh. you hear about the, um, oh, shit, Amber, can you help me what it's called? You used to work, too. We do all. <laughs> Remember I told you, um, Lord, my mind just drew blank. The court, is that the right word? Coordinates? Like, somebody put in oh. the coordinates from, like, the yeah. mall, the coordinates to that mall, and then Antarctica? They're yeah, the, the same, but flipped. Yeah, I saw that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, they sent some coordinates out and turned out, I think Antarctica, there's something going on there anyway. You yeah. see it a lot. The, uh, but I don't know what it is. So, if you're asking me an opinion, I'm more curious than anything i mean i didn't want to go there now i do yeah <laughs> it's been very that still intrigues me i haven't seen much pop up about it anymore. Oh, yeah, but I know, you know you know if i was in antarctica if i was an alien it'd be underground anyway mm -hmm. so you know I, I wouldn't have a, a trump hotel sorry 
the <laughs> hotel on the top of it and going, hey, land here kind of thing. I think nowhere to go. Anyway, sorry, I talked to myself. Oh, you're fine. Her and I are notorious for going off on tangents and already we're all over the place. <laughs> we'll start talking about our kids and shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, now, have you heard anything about the Mandela effects? Like that there's a theory, there's a theory that whatever we're doing in with CERN has shifted us into a similar but different dimension. Fiona Broom, Bloom, Broom, I think it's Broom. It's got an E at the end. Uh, yeah, named after Nelson. But the whole thing about that is that uh, I we were just talking about interdimensional stuff anyway, so do I believe in that? Yes. Did, has it happened to me? I don't know. I drink a lot. So have I forgotten time? It's probably not the Mandela effect, though. You know what I mean? Uh, you you can keep that if you want. That's fine. Well, uh, like, do um, I believe in it? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Like them trying to tell us that certain things, like, me and Jolene are both Gen Xers, or like the cutoff of Gen X. So we remember certain things like the Shazam movie. I know damn well there was a Shazam movie. I remember watching it. There, there, Isn't it it's, like with Shaquille O'Neal and like oh. Bugs Bunny? No, you're thinking of... Um, that's a whole other movie, isn't it? No, yeah, that's Space Jam. Shazam. Okay. But I still have heard that. Yeah, Shazam, Shazam was, heard that. where Shaquille O'Neal was a genie. Not the Mandela effect. You just lost your freaking mind. That, and things like but that. That's a common example. Right. Um, or like the Berenstein Bears being spelled different. Yeah, that one I know, man. I love them bears. <laughs> that was my jam when I was a kid. <laughs> I, don't know. I like bears. But no, I don't know that. No, but now I'm going to look. Do I believe in it? Yes, I do. Is it a space anomaly? It, well, I know dimensions are, are real because if we, just as an example, if we live in the third dimension as, and heaven is the fifth or sixth dimension, that's cool. You know, so there has to be a dimension in between, too, or above or below or whatever the hell. Um, yeah, I have to. Mandela, I'm in. Uh, we have some supposed to have died in 1981. He didn't really die. Something, there's something there. Oh, well, there's actually lots of them, like, um, that, that do more than just with pop culture. Like the... I have a vague memory of Nelson Mandela being dead. And now people are trying to say that, no, he just went to prison. Well, I remember that too, but I don't know how I can remember them both. I don't remember either one of those, so. Great example. I have one for you. I don't know if this is Mandela, but I, I, I was two when I watched... Uh, how do you remember at two years old, unless you're a psychic medium or Mandela something going on? But I remember the uh, Apollo something going up and my whole family's watching, everybody's intrigued and all that kind of stuff. And I'm watching it and I'm looking outside because they're, they're looking like they can see it. You can't. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah, I don't know. But I remember it at two years old, there's something going on there. That's the way I see it. It's not quite Mandela, but do you remember, uh, 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 you know, like, like, you know, like when you were like one? I can remember, I, can't. I can remember, I, a can't, dream. No. I can remember a dream I had that young, but I don't remember being that young. Same thing. Yeah, I remember a dream that I had. I was older than two, though, but I was, like, really little. But that's the only part, you know, around the thing I can remember is just the dream. Go on. Okay. Please. So, we have some questions that we've asked our viewers. One of them you've already answered about. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Oh. Before I have one more, before I totally forget, I'm sorry. Okay. 
I I'm, I really want to know this one. <laughs> What's your the scariest encounter you've had during a reading? With the living or the dead? During a reading. All right. Yes. This was scary. I think the scariest. Other than seeing dead people, which is for me normal. But the, all right, here's, <laughs> I was reading for this lady. I won't tell you where it is. Too, too, too much. It doesn't matter. But um, um, I, her grandfather came through. It was a grandfather for sure. And he had been, I picked, I think he's in the mafia. Who does that to people? But um, they have them in the ear. And that's how he does. Oh, my God. Well, yeah, hold on. The, the weird part comes. My ear started to bleed right right here on the opposite side of whatever side he got stabbed on. But I, I was starting to bleed here. The lady said, you're bleeding. I didn't, I could feel it, but it didn't quite make it to my collar, you know, but you can feel it come down like tears. You can feel it. And it was coming down and, and, and she handed me a tissue, which is always right there. Um, and, and it was blood, mine. I, I, I didn't test it, but I assume it's mine. Wouldn't it be weird if it was his blood? Yeah, it would be weird. Yeah, oh. but that was my serious one. I didn't know if I was going to die or I'm having an aneurysm. And I, I wasn't a brand new psychic at the time, but that was the first time that happened. Only time. That was it. That was the scariest one. That is really scary. Other than predicting people's death, you know, I don't like those. And I try not to even mention it. It comes up. When am I going to die? I don't know when you die. I just know it's Tuesday. <laughs> I just know it's a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Amber. I didn't mean to cut you off. I didn't want to forget about it, and I probably would have. Um, no, we're good. Speaking about um, client experiences, what are the pet peeves that clients do that drive you as a medium nuts? And I know you have some because you told me that I did one of them. You, you upset me? Not upset you, but you told me immediately, mm -hmm. like, you knew immediately that I was trying to block you out of certain areas. And oh, you, you called yeah, me out on it instantly. You're like, this isn't yeah, going to work. <laughs> well, you have to be open to it. You know, skeptics don't bother me. I like those. One lady did this. This is the worst only happened when I, my clients, let me say this, my clients, like I said, I've been doing this for 50 years more. And so the the one client said, and she knew, because I had done like five people before her reading, and she knew I was going to read her hand. And she, she pulled off her shoes and said, read my feet. <sighs> oh, here's a pet peeve. Uh, I hate psychic jokes. <laughs> If I, if I spill a beer, somebody's going to say, what, you didn't see it coming? Like, come on, man. You, you didn't know the cop was behind you, really, Terry? Come on, you didn't see it coming? Uh, fuck you, I'm supposed to get a ticket. I just whatever <laughs> that. The, uh, I spilled the beer. That was me. You know, all that. It's, yeah, it's just they expect, you know, if people come over and then just say, I always say, just please, if you have any questions, just ask me. But if somebody comes over and, uh, and they just want to know if their boyfriend's cheating, it's not a pet peeve, but it's a little petty. And then I'm here to talk to dead people. You want to know if John is cheating on Becky? <laughs> probably. <laughs> so he's probably fucking cheating. <laughs> use your intuition, damn it. Yeah, use your own intuition. Why do I have to tell you dude's cheating? You know. Uh, go ahead. That was a great question. By the way, really cool. Um, so we do ha have asked our viewers some response questions. Um, so we thought maybe you'd like to answer some of them. One of them you did answer with that you would go camping at Skinwalker. Um, do you think that all spirits... Yeah, yeah what do you do? Oh, yeah. Uh, we would... I don't know about Jolene. She gets a little scaredy cat. She's I would kind go of... anyways, even if I cried like a little bitch, I'd still go. <laughs> She's kind of like Zach Baggins. She wants things to happen, but her ass hightails it out of there when it actually starts. <laughs> yeah, really? Uh, uh, go I can't believe up. you compared me to that dude. What the fuck? <laughs> I am no, so upset. Nothing happened, but I'm upset with me. Uh, Jolene and I actually, um, that will be something hopefully when 
when, not if, this podcast takes off and gets monetized, um, we will start doing. Um, her and I are in two different states, so it makes things a little difficult. But this summer, we do have some things planned for our viewers that do entail us going and ghost hunting and seeing what fun things are. Bring a real medium with you. Well, maybe if you're into it, it, we could um, we could talk about that. Um, you're the only real medium I know. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Sylvia died, so I don't know anymore. Well, John, I know John, but he doesn't call. So anymore. He, he, seems to be, he seems to be a bit busy lately. I hope so. Good for him. I haven't met that Tyler Perry guy yet, but the things I've seen, and I realize editing and all that, but he seems legit. I have met him, but the kid seems like he knows what he's up to. Uh, there's a, a car, a dude that like drives an Uber around and like randomly picks up people and gives them readings in the car. And... I'm not sure how much of that's editing because their responses seem I've real. Neither. <laughs> but yeah, like he, uh, he like caught. Watch a different show. He caught this one dude like completely off guard. He's like, um, "Did your father pass away?" And the dude's looking at him like, "How did you know?" And you know, then he tells him that he's a medium and stuff like that. He goes, "If you don't want to talk about it, I'll stop right now. But I just have to tell you, he's sitting right next to you, and he's got things to say." And then. He just, the guy's like, okay, and he just goes into it, but that was the only show I've seen. That seems like but a he, way to scare the shit out of people. You know, it's a good way to get, like, slapped in the <laughs> face. way to get slapped in the face. Yeah, like, you just uh, tell somebody that person, or, like, just walk up to him and tell him that, something that person. I lost a tooth. I, yeah, I lost a tooth I had because I was, I, I was at Myers at, uh, in line, and, uh, and I said to the guy in front of me, I said, your dad's here. And I'm sorry, he's a suicide, but he wants you to know and blah, whatever I said. I don't remember, but whatever I said. And he said, I don't want to talk to you. And I went, okay, I apologize, man, but he's just right here. I could not say it, you know? So, and then he went outside and he did his thing and I did my groceries. And he punched me square in the face real, real hard. And I lost it too if I had. And I didn't get the tooth fixed because I think that's to remind me, don't, 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 you just can't attack people with psychicness, you know, a psychic attack. It's not cool, man. Uh, I wouldn't do that if I was a cab driver. I just, ain't no way. I think that somebody would shoot me. I don't know who I'm putting in my cab anyway. Fuck that. I'm not doing that job. Right. Well, there are certain people that are... I mean, there are certain people that don't believe in it whatsoever, that it completely is not, you know, where it's, talk into it. right, where it's, talk into it. right it's, it's far beyond skepticism. It, it has to do with like their core belief structure that just rocks it too much that there are people that know things that you make that you don't or can see things that you can't. Um, <clears throat> well put. Oh, um. <laughs> you said that very well. And hey, here, I want to say good luck with the podcast because you guys give good interviews. You didn't make me nervous. Uh, sometimes I get nervous with these things, and you guys are just right there. You're very calm, and uh, that was great. Good for you. Well, thank you. Have fun. Thank you. Now, um, you kind of touched on this question a little bit um, prior, but we did. Uh, it was something that was that was a conversation that Jolene and I had. Kind of, both of our husbands are far beyond skeptics. They don't believe in anything that we do. Kind of think that we're crazy and probably should check us in the nut ward for some of the things that we talk about. But the conversation was, are all spirits demons? That when we interact with something no. paranormal, that it's always a demon. In heaven don't become demons. People in heaven are the ones I talk to. Have I met a demon? No. Do I think I? I have not. I right now clearing the slate. There ain't no way that I have been around anything so malevolent that I ran away from. Everything is that you can confront. Um, been scary sometimes, but demons haven't met one. Do I believe them? I have to. I believe in God. I have to believe. Good and evil, all that, but yeah, have I not one? No, and I, the story you told me earlier is about something. that's a serial killer. Is that a demon? Maybe. You know, it depends on how you define demon. 
Oh, we even touched on we even touched on cryptids. Oh, <clears throat> this is kind of a just a general advice question. <clears throat> Because we talk about things that are that go against the grain and go against conventional beliefs, just becoming a little bit more mainstream lately. Um, Jolene and I run into a lot of negativity, and not just because we have dark content, but you're stupid, you're wrong, you're going to hell, um, you shouldn't be talking about these things, and. Get used to it, guys, because you won't be able to stop uh, being interested in what's really interesting. You know, I mean, everybody just wants to do their vanilla bullshit. I want to know if Bigfoot's real. You know, I want to know if there's anything at that Skinwalker Ranch. And if there's not, I'm willing to be the first person to say no. I was stupid for a second. You know, otherwise, no, you're always going to, I got punched in the face. Am I not going to be a medium anymore? I just, your husbands are uber sick or uber skeptic. Maybe you just don't talk about Bigfoot in front of Bigfoot skeptics. You know, maybe you just gotta, I just don't walk up to people in the mall anymore and say, guess what? I can't. But get used to it, guys, because you can't change your mindset. What's going on in your head? If you're not watching it on TV, wait, yes, you are. You know, then you're creating content for somebody else to TV. You know, or listen to whatever. However, you guys are gonna pull this off. Yeah, and that's um, why we started the channel because we equally yeah. have the same interests and passion about the same thing. So, my wife, if, if my wife was to say, "Get a get a job," you're a I don't know. Let's go with you're a gypsy. You're basically a circus clown. I would have got a new wife more than I would been able to get a new job I just I can't wake up tomorrow and be a plumber I this is what I am right. and I'm gonna be do tomorrow or the next day but thank God I married somebody that puts up with the you know your brother's here right there. can you hear me she says no and obviously she can't she's a fourth grader we'll get into that in another episode uh, yeah this has been fun man. appreciate it well, I'm glad that you've enjoyed talking to us. Is there anything that you would want our viewers to know about your perspective as being a medium, whether that's pet peeves on, or things that they should do before a reading um, or anything like that? Like, I, just for instance, like, would it help? would it help you if people, like, meditated before they walked in to have a reading with you? is to clear your heart and clear your mind. Don't expect dad to come through because dad has to walk through. But hope, you know, talk to him. Talk out loud to people in heaven. That's the only way they can hear you anyway. And, uh, yeah, and just come in with an open idea. A little skeptic is great. Please do. Because I, if I'm not proving it to you, I didn't do my job either. And, uh, yeah, and ask a lot of questions. Be, come up with questions. Anytime you get a reading with anybody, and I hope it's me, 734-652-9782, uh, give me a call. <sighs> that was good. I, I did that. Uh, <laughs> that really good plug there. there. That was really good. <laughs> in the middle, I got kind of stuck. And I realized, you know, this is my opponent. The, uh, yeah, just come prepared to hear things that might not make sense that day, day after tomorrow, well. And uh, and uh, expect to be wowed. If you see a real medium or a real psychic, you'll go home going, how the fuck did he know? You know, that kind of thing. Otherwise, uh, well, don't go to one other than me. I, 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 my the uh, 734-652-9782. Yeah, that's it. Here's my social security number, too. <laughs> no, we don't want that. We don't want that. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> oh, it's been fun, guys. Thank you for allowing me to do this with you. Uh, and anytime you need a guest or something, you can't find somebody who's more entertaining to me. Oh, wait, there isn't anybody more entertaining to me. But, uh, yeah, I'd be more than happy to hang out with you guys again. And you want to go camping somewhere? My wife hates to camp. 
let's go camping. Let's, I don't know where uh, where Skinwalker Ranch actually is. Utah. Is it in Utah? I keep forgetting. I know that we've discussed this before, but I can always forget where it's at. Yeah, um, there's actually a show on Discovery that they track the scientific research that's going on there, and there it there's some there's something going on there that people I honestly think that people aren't meant to know, and there's something either interdimensional or or. I think there's something either extraterrestrial or dimensional that's purposely blocking us from finding out because there's uh, there's uh, intelligence in how they're being stopped. I've heard all that. Good. Yeah. Let's keep up. Oh yeah, absolutely. Do our research, otherwise we're just talking shit like little thumpers. They've never seen God, and yet they just. Tell us that Bigfoot doesn't live either. Uh, maybe Bigfoot's the wrong example, but well, it's actually a perfect. It, it's actually a perfect example. Is we expect people to have blind faith in God based on Christian or Judeo Christian outlook, but if you actually throw in what started Christianity, which was paganism and and things like that, you start realizing it's the same story. They just change the characters. Let's go back to demons for a second. I just thought of something. What if demons aren't like a, a physical being kind of thing? What if it's thoughts and deeds? What if that's a demon? Do you know what I mean? And not you're not taken over by anything. You were taken over by your own thoughts. We all have a light and dark side in us. Mm -hmm. So... If, if the dark comes out more than the light, maybe that's what you were asking earlier and I didn't understand why people have a filter and some don't. I think that, uh, yeah, it comes out more on some people and not, and why, I have no idea, but uh, hey, Ted Bundy. Do you think that there could be spiritual influence on people like that? I do. Well, I well darkness. I don't. I don't think Satanism is a real thing. I think you're just praying to the fact of evil. I don't believe Satan's going to show up at your meeting, and you know, and with a cloak and some horns and a tail with a pitchfork and shit. No. Do you, I think you're just celebrating dark? Like I, I, I believe church should be like Catholics or whatever. Uh, I believe they're trying to celebrate light. Satanism isn't about Satan. It's about darkness. That was good. I've actually been that was deep right there. I'd keep that. I've been, that was good. <laughs> I've been researching a little bit on Satanism because of um, the what got me into researching exactly what it was, was uh, Richard Ramirez. We did a podcast about Richard Ramirez, and something I noticed was the Church of Satan showed up for him. They wrote up, they wrote speeches for him, and I watched interviews with Anton LaVey's um, son-in-law, and he explained the reason that that church showed up is what Ramirez thought Satanism was, he was completely wrong, and they didn't want him... In the 80s, during Satanic Panic and all that stuff, misrepresenting Satanism. That it's not... Ramirez thought it was like the exact opposite of what the Catholics teach, like anti-God. And it's really not. It's more of a, a personal-based religion where they're out for themselves. Um, it's, it's more of a, a personal, like... But, like, the one um, ideology that stuck out the most with me where people would probably say it's evil is that if you're, if somebody comes into your house and they are mean to you or they're trying to hurt you, destroy them. Like, there, there's no mercy in, in it whatsoever where Christianity or even Judaism and Islam, there's mercy. But the word you said Islam. I'm looking at the book right now. <laughs> well, so, yeah. Come on. I include the big three kind of together because I really, like I said, I think that it's all the same story. They just change the characters. 
Oh, yes, I agree completely. I, I haven't read the Tehran because it's this big. It's like three inches thick. But it, the, the part that I did read, the beginning, it's basically the Bible. Just I, I like how you worded that. It just They changed the names, but the story's the same. You know, so what? What's the story? Let's all be good to each other. And that's, it's 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 real. It, I think it. My personal is. I think it's harder to be mean to people than it is to be old. I'll tell you an example. I got yelled at the other day for opening the door for a lady. She said, "I can get my own door." I went, "Wow, okay." I didn't say it out loud, but in my head, I went, "Wow, I was right here anyway." Do you know what I mean? I was just, fuck. You know, that kind of deal. So I think it's just much easier to be nice than it is to be mean. Yeah. She just walks through the door instead of saying anything. My husband's um, commented on that lately, that he's an open-the-door-for-women type thing. And um, either women will think that he's hitting on them, or they're just rude about it. In my opinion, people nowadays are just rude. Well, it's be like, it shouldn't be just... I still like hugging. You know, it's, the world is easier if we're nice to each other. It, it should be easy. I, racism, don't get me started. Gravity, I don't want to talk about it. I think the world sucks, not gravity is down. Do you know, I think the Earth sucking in. I, but, you know, that's for another topic. Just like the Earth is hollow. And the Earth is not flat. Let me end with that. The Earth is <laughs> not flat. <laughs> One day, I'll show and I'll, I'll bring uh, that the black scientist guy with me and uh, again are you, are you talking about man. Neil Gra or Neil that's the one I'll bring him with me I know him I'll bring him with me and we'll realize it's not flat well, okay we'll figure it out for you well see I have a problem with the flat earth theory um, because um, I have familial ties to the Hubbles um, my grandma's a Hubble oh. And my cousin is the is some is the one that the telescope was named after. So, um, you have a hard time convincing me that I know there's something in there that takes amazing pictures of the Earth every day and shows it's round. And I know that's real. <laughs> like faking the moon landing. There ain't no way they faked it. You know, stop talking about it. Let's move on to something real, like aliens. Am I? Uh, well, it's getting hard. Dimensional beings. It's getting harder and harder for them to say that aliens aren't real. And NASA, like during COVID, that's when they slipped in that aliens are real. It was when we were all distracted by COVID and being locked in. But NASA announced it: aliens are real. Here's what we've got. What do you guys think? Nobody said a word. It was crickets. Yeah. And like, all right. Let's, all right, thank you, Jerry. Yeah, thank you so much.